Hey Martin here, thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're all well and you have had super creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. This week in, in, in the workshop I said that I would be doing a hollow form, which, uh, which I did. And it was that close to being finished um, when some of the paint ran and left a streak down the side of it. So I tried to do a bit more streaky stuff all over all over the piece which I ended up not liking so I decided that I was going to sand it off um, and where I was sanding it off um, I realized I kind of made the walls a little bit too thin and went through it so here's the bottom part and there's the top part of the piece so it would have been quite a nice effort um, I know exactly where I went wrong with it made the walls too thin and then when I went to reshape the outside with the gouge made them even thinner and then of course when I went to um, sand off the copper streaks uh, <laughs> I went through it so anyway if you want to here um, please enjoy the rest of the video about how I turn this uh, sort of Ernie pot thing and uh, I'll see you again soon for another video where I don't mess it up so here is how I turned and broke the hollow form pot Okay, mounted up on um, Sorby 120mm faceplate here, um, I've got a very nice lump of Port Orford cedar, uh, which is also known as uh, Lawson Cypress. Um, it's quite soft, um, it turns quite pale. Um, this is um, actually still um, a tad wet, which will be interesting, but at least it should make the hollowing with the Sorby Ultimate tool a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to shape the outside with um, a bowl gouge, but first off I need to rough it down into a nice cylinder and I'll use the uh, spindle roughing gouge for that. So I'll mount it onto the chuck, like so. <laughs> Oops, okay, remember which way it fits. And I'm going to turn the whole thing on the faceplate. So I only have to mount it once. I'm not going to use a tenon or anything like that. Right, let's uh, bring the tailstock up and start roughing it down. It's quite big um, and uh, it's quite close to the lathe bed so I've had to start with the tool rest just off to the left of it uh, so I can do this bit and work it down so I can move the tool rest along the piece as I rough it down. And just very carefully say it's a bit wet I mean I'm getting wet uh, let's see if I can move that over a little bit yeah. right I'm gonna finish roughing this down because it's just gonna be boring so I'll finish roughing it down um, to a cylinder and then we'll take it on to the next step so here we are rounded down to um, a reasonable cylinder it's, uh, it's a lovely wood to work with it's quite soft um, and as you can see it's quite pale, it's fairly dry at this end but it's fairly wet um, over here on the left. Now I need to work out where I want, vaguely want this vase to be and now I think this piece is going to be too long, um, I don't know, I'm going to have a think about it as I talk but the screws in here are about an inch and a half um, so I've got a safe area here, down here on the left, or rather that's the danger area, so I can't part off down here on the left, um, but I can part off sort of anywhere in this area here. Now I want a sort of a bulbous vase or a bulbous form with perhaps a, um, a little bit of a neck 
I really don't know. I'm just going to have to make it up. But um, I've got a few little check marks down here. So I'm going to part off the piece. Erring on the side of caution, I'm going to part off about there, just below the lowest point of um, the raw edge on the end here, on the right, and then form the vase out of that bit. Somehow. So I'll part off down there, and then um, so I've got a nice flat edge to work off, and then we can uh, have another think. So I need a diamond tip parting tool. go it's off splendid right so I've now got um, I've got a nice flat area on here to work with and pull the tailstock back up and just start to make sort of a bit of a a bit of a, a rough shape so get the shaping started and then I'll bore out the hole for a uh, for the neck and also the body of the vase. So I'm going to use the bowl gouge for that and I'm going to have a bit of a neck, not too much of a neck I don't think, sort of a bulbous body and then that will lead down into a foot at the bottom. So let's see how that pans out shall we? So I'm going to use the bowl gouge a bit like a spindle gouge Right, okay, I think I've got a vague a vague shape that I'm looking for. Um, but knowing me, it will probably change again. So I'm going to bore the hole out with um, a 50mm Forstner bit. <coughs> Using the Jacob's Chuck. Um, I've done... I've done boring a hole out before so I won't cover it again but I want to go down as far as possible well as far as the bit will let me so down to about there so I'll go all the way down to the bottom of the bit very carefully I'm turning with the lathe quite slowly too so I will do that and then I will come back to you for uh, a bit more shaping. Um, it's been a couple of days since I last had time to uh, film and the piece has been sat on the lathe and it's dried out a little bit so as it spins there's a little wobble where it's dried. It's only tiny but I'm not going to worry about it. Now I've got the Sorby Ultima hollowing tool and I've angled the head um, appropriately and I've made a little bit of room in there already so I've got some space to move the tool um, and at the top I've probably got half a millimeter cutting edge showing at the top of the tool um, the tool rest is far enough back from the piece um, with the tool rest at center height for for the uh, for the cutting edge and far enough back so when I remove the tool from the piece um, I'm clear. The cutting edge is clear of the piece um, before the uh, before the joint here hits the hits the tool rest. But with the lathe running fairly slow, I'm just 
just gonna hog out the inside. thing with it is when cutting fibrous woods or wet wood the uh, the cutter and guard do uh, do tend to clog up a little bit but if you're if you're not in a hurry there's no need to um, panic about it really more room to play, not um, right, I've finished the hollowing. Um, it's down I've, I've got the walls down to about 15 mil. Um, just under sort of uh, half an inch or just over half an inch I think so not exactly the world's thinnest walls but that's not what I'm after I'm just after a hollow form that I can shape a little bit more um, and then sand down and be happy with so let's have a look inside we've got a fairly smooth uh, inside of the piece I'm quite happy with it um, but because I can't reach down there with my fingers, I'm not going to worry too much um, about that. But it'll do. It'll do. Right. Turn the little torch off. Uh, I'm now going to shape the outside a little bit more, being careful not to go through go through the walls and um, see what kind of shape we can come up with. First thing I'm going to do is sort out the rim of the piece, as that's got a few little chip marks in it. So I'm going to use the bowl gouge. Then I'm going to turn the tool rest round. That'll be all right when I sand it. Bring back a rubber ball to support the piece. And then start shaping the final the final shape that I want, which I haven't decided on yet. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. Just checking, uh, just checking the wall thickness, and right here, I'm down to five mil, which um, is quite, uh, quite thin. But I've got plenty of room to play with here, so I want to smooth that off around, around here, make a nice curve in there, being very careful not to go through it, and then I can dive in here to create, uh, to create a nice, shape, a nice thin base for it.
I've finished um, finishing or sanding down the piece, the, this um, Port Orford cedar or uh, Lawson cypress really does sand beautifully. Um, but the knot fell out. The little knot that was here has fallen out, so nothing I can do about that. But what I'm going to do next with it is I'm going to paint the top copper um, with the reactive paints. I'm going to paint the top copper and then I need to put a mark in down here for the foot to be copper. But then I'm going to um, put a little band in uh, around here as well. So I need to get a tool back in there just to make some little marks and perhaps a little decoration. So I'll start down there. It's still fairly thin. Um, so I'm going to use um, the parting and beading tool just to put a mark there and a mark there I think just to um, give it a bit of a highlight so all this in here is going to be copper and then There to there is going to be copper as well. I'm going to give the paint a shake and I'm not going to worry about the um, I'm not going to worry about putting a whatever it's called on it. What do they call it? Oh a primer. I'm not going to worry about a primer. I'm going to slow the lathe down. And I'm going to run. I'm actually going to run it the other way. So I've got a normal little artist brush. So the copper paint is on it, on the piece, and it's virtually dry. But what I forgot to do, like an idiot, I forgot to oil it. So I'm going to have to put some oil on it now. And now the oil is pretty much dry. I'm going to put. Um, I'm going to use Hampshire Sheen Original on it because I don't want a bright shine or anything like that with it. So I'm just going to put on some original Hampshire Sheen. Really should have done this before I did the paint, but. Never mind. That looks all right. And now I'm going to part it off because the next part of the decoration I actually want it to be upright. <clears throat> With the diamond tip parting tool, I'm going to start to make the cut. Got it. It's actually quite an interesting shape. Um, I was actually getting quite disappointed with it, but it's actually quite a nice. <laughs> it's quite a nice shape. I've actually, yeah. Horrible, horrible spigoty bit on the bottom, which I'm going to have to sand off. So. Here's the piece off the lathe, and I've got um, I've got some of the metal reactive paint the copper again in a pot. So I'm going to use a natural sea sponge which 
which I'm going to use to dab the paint all over all over the top I actually think I should have worked from the bottom up Oh look, that's a real pain. That's why I should have worked from the bottom up. Okay. Right, design modification. So I'm gonna go all over the top here now then. Yes, it's going over a wax finish. That is a real bum. It's going to take a month of Sundays for this to dry. There we go. To say that I'm frustrated is an understatement. Um, I hate the way it looks so I'm going to see if I can sand it all off well not all of it but most of it I've made a I've made a jam chuck sort of um, out of the scrap bit of wood left over from where I parted it off um, with a bulge there so I can just fit the piece over it just to hold it in place just to see if I can um, sand it all off and um, see if I can just save it somehow just do something so I don't have to be so fed up with it so that's the plan I'm going to sand it off I'm really fed up really fed up. So I'm going to get some sandpaper, sand it all back and um, see if I can rescue it somehow. Well that's what has happened. I tried to rescue the piece um, but I made the walls a little bit too thin um, where it's where it's broken. Um, but sanding back to lose the um, the copper streaks would have worked. Um, it really would have worked, as you can see. Um, it was coming off, but unfortunately, I'd gone a little bit too thin on the walls and uh, couldn't sand it back enough to rescue it. Unfortunately, so this piece is destined for the bin. Um, so yeah. Uh, Thank you very much indeed for watching, um, I hope you enjoyed most of the video apart from where it all went wrong at the end and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon for another video, probably. <laughs> well that's it, I'm sorry it didn't work folks and um, yeah, see you soon, bye for now.